your weekly nifty island space you already know what's going on back with the vibes um guys before i continue on you already know what to do bottom right button repost like comment bookmark all those great things you already know what i'm gonna ask guys we're back breaking web 3 into web 2 stacked stacked panel literally just look at the panel we are absolutely stacked today i'm ready for another conversation and i don't even want to waste any more time let me check in with charles the captain of the ship charles what is going on how are you doing what's going on Basta, good to be on with you life is good life is good yeah we're just uh staying busy um pushing a bunch of updates and changes we're planning for the next wave of the airdrop so that's uh it's going to be a lot of fun goal is for that one to be bigger and better than the last and for the game to be more stable more fun uh and more viral so we're just uh we're pushing hard to get that done and yeah and then in the meantime players have been crushing it there's been just so much great content um i'll pin a few things that people can kind of have a look at while uh while they listen to us but yeah life is good it's good to be on with you oh man we love seeing charles up on space i don't know about you guys but i love seeing charles on spaces let me check in with the rest of this panelist we got some new faces rph from steady stack team who was also working with us over at unfungible rph my friend really great to see you up on another space what is going on how are you doing today yeah, yo, what's going on, Legend? Uh, it's another absolutely blessed day to to count our blessings and you know keep on getting ahead, keep on getting one percent better. So I'm excited to be here up with you, Legends. Let's get it. Let's get it. I just had Ash Robin on a previous space not too long ago, but Ash, I didn't get to probably introduce you in. Um, and again, I know X has been rugging left and right, so. Real quick, I'm gonna pray to the X gods that this doesn't rug this space because I know how Elon can be um ash what is going on my friend how are you doing today yeah man what's going on no it's uh it's good we're like hanging out all day today seriously it's awesome <laughs> it's awesome no i'm uh things are going good definitely excited for this one um rph charles sanjay great to chat with you guys today i'm excited for it and uh and i already have th some things that i want to talk about but i'll let you go through the rounds first Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you, Ash, for that amazing intro. Going to my boy, Sanjay. San what is going on, Sanjay? How are you doing today? Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you for having me. Uh, Bowser, it has been a while. We haven't talked. So, you know, happy to hear your voice and chat with you on a space and everybody else in the space as well. Robin, shout out for Ash. Uh, thanks for the shout out. And, um, you know, uh, one of my favorite games. So can't, can't, can't wait to talk more about it. You know, there's uh, so much fun things happening with Nifty. I'm super excited. Most definitely, man. Again, Nifty is just constantly on my timeline, bro. And it's not even from the main account. It's from all the homies that are playing the game. Um, so again, guys, we talked about UGC the other week. This is a prime, prime example of what UGC looks like, right? Let's go to KPR, man. You future site echo. Dude, I, I'm just starting to attach that beautiful PFP wherever you go on spaces. Future site, my friend, how are you doing? What's going on today? Yeah, having a lot of fun actually. You know, Ramen Wars has been really well received. Everyone's having a lot of fun, so everyone can jump in. I'm loving seeing all the uh, custom made ramen and all that kind of stuff go out. And I equally have to say, I'm loving seeing all the custom made islands and Nifty Island. Gosh damn, some people are creative, eh? But, uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm loving all this this stuff on the timeline at the moment. Absolutely, man. And shout out to Ramen Wars and congrats to you and the KPR team for absolutely crushing it on the launch of that. Um, last but not least, we got DJ Jagman, a very committed member of Nifty Island. I know this man is hosting music festivals. He's hosting parties on that island. DJ Jagman, what is going on? How are you doing today? What up, what up? Hey, it's DJ Jagman here. I just want to shout out Nifty Island. Shout out everybody on the board there. They're killing it. Uh, I actually got a little call with uh, Charles tomorrow. So we're going to have a little conversation and uh, talk some nifty stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be pretty nifty. <laughs> uh, <Hell> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, Bossa? Dude, it is a Monday. Uh, nifty Island is my second space to kick off this week. I had one um, not too long ago. But, dude, this is my bread and butter, bro. And like what uh, Ash was just saying, it's just hanging out with the homies. 
bro. And we're really just talking Web3 gaming. And I think this is what it's all about. And Nifty Island provides that vibe to us, you know? So shout out to Nifty Island. But hey, Jagman, really, really cool to see you up on stage. Please stay. Because I know you're always, always wanting to chime into the discussions. And just glad you're here, my friend. Um, I'm here, bro. I'm going to be playing Nifty <laughs> all day. If anyone wants to hop in there in the space and run around with me like a crazy person and raid some islands, let's get a little group going. Let's play some Nifty Island while we listen to them talk about it. Fuck it. Yes. Feel free to drop your uh, island link and I'll pin it uh, to the space. There we go. There we go. Dude, Jagman, you remind me of like friends on Xbox Live who would just text me like, in the morning, yo, are you online? And then, like, during the night, yo, are you online? Like, dude, just... <laughs> Bro, that's the funniest thing, because, like, I'm that person in real life. I'll hit up my boy. <laughs> See, I I have, like, this ritual. I'm, I'm like, best friends with my buddy from high school. We've been best friends for, like, 14 years, 15 years. And literally every day we hit each other up we take a fat dab and we get on playstation and play rocket league or, <laughs> or apex but hey you guys are stealing him away from me or stealing me away from him i should say because i'm over here he's like hitting me up we take our dab he's like you want to play some games i said yeah nifty island you need to get on <laughs> yeah get him in f3 bro what are you doing this is uh I'm this is what is all about I'm like, bro, what do we need to do to get you, like, a shitty laptop to run it on potato <laughs> mode? We got to figure this out. I love it. Jack, man, thank you for your amazing intro. And, guys, I just looked at today's space. We're just above the 10-minute mark. Where we're already at 110 people in here. Thank you to everyone pulling up early, showing support in today's space. Um, Again, show some love, reposting, liking, commenting, all that beautiful things. Um, Charles, the way I want to kick things off is not even actually talking about the main discussion. But you've pinned up a couple posts here on um, onto the Jumbotron. I would love for you to kind of just do a, a, a weekly recap. What are what are some I guess some new metrics, some new data uh, you've been paying attention to um, since the last space last week? Charles, please take over. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, let me have a look. I can pull some up in real time too. Um, hold on. Well, I'll run through some of the pin tweets while I do that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple things here. So I think first, like the first one I have pinned is just uh, basically something, a message we're trying to get out to broader Web3 community and and definitely everyone who plays Nifty, um, which is really that there's, again, a lot of, there's a b big diversity of theses people are pursuing in Web3 gaming. And, and for us, we really think the goal is to try to create radically new types of games, ones that lean into Web3 really radically. and. Uh, and, and offer something totally new. So I would the first is we're really trying to make sure our community knows that this is a big tent. Uh, the goal is to get all the best content creators, Web3 communities and players together and rallied around a new ideas of how, of how games can operate and how they can function. Uh, and so for us, that means games that are community driven. It's fundamentally about a tight relationship between the core team and the people playing. It's also about bringing the best communities in Web3 into Nifty. And then it's about prizes. It's about new forms of UGC that leverage NFTs. It's it's really about being super crypto native. And if you're excited about that by playing right now, you can be an OG in that movement um, by farming island token. So that's the first. The other bit of content I was pinning was some great stuff from uh, Bihaz, uh, Bihaz um, which is just some really funny Sappy Seals content. Uh, they Sappy Seals did emerge as the number one community in Nifty. They've been holding that spot for a while, and they were rewarded for it. On Sunday, they came out on top in our community leaderboard competition. So there's going to be a lot more community versus community challenges that kind of pit, allow communities to sort of rep and show you know, who's the most active, who plays the most, who's the most skilled. So you're going to see a bunch of opportunities for communities to battle it out. Um, that'll be really fun. So got that. And then, uh, yeah, I think those are the ones I have pinned. Um, and then other than that, you know, we're just seeing more and more islands get created. Uh, let me have a look at how many we have total right now. Yeah, we're about 21,000 islands oh that have been God. created. It's pretty good. Uh, and yeah, usage has just been kind of strong and steady. And what we're going to see with Wave 2 is the is growing top of funnel. Uh, it's going to be a bunch of changes, but top of funnel so more people can get involved in the airdrop, which was kind of intentionally restrictive to avoid botting. And then 
and then yeah, you're gonna see just the game itself become inherently more viral. So yeah, no, it's it's good. People are sticking around. Retention strong. And uh, next up, we uh, we kind of throw a lot more gasoline on the fire. Charles, do we ever see like a creators tournament? Like, is that in the works? I, I definitely want to see some like one v ones going around of like Ash versus Sanjay or like <laughs> uh, anything along those lines. That would be pretty sick. Um, Charles, first of all, that's that's fucking amazing, dude. The stats: twenty one thousand islands. Um, Charles, we, we mentioned last space that. Um, you know, we, we'd like to see, I guess, a leaderboard of like the top trending, um, islands. Um, I, myself, is, is that, is that something in the work, something already kind of embedded? Am I missing something here? Oh, Charles, yeah, go ahead. You can, you can see a leaderboard with the top islands, uh, right now. So, um, so you can, you can check that out. Uh, you can see them or ordered by visits. We're going to offer more, uh, rankings that, that are a bit more refined, uh, soon, but, yeah, you can see the top islands by visits, and you'll see the, the top ones of thousands and, and thousands of visitors uh, that have come through. So, yeah, you can Huge. check that out on the web app. If you go to more, go to go to the web app, look at the top bar, click more, you'll see leaderboards, and uh, you can you can check there. Huge RPH. I see you unmuted, my friend. You want to add something? No, my apologies. I think my my finger just slipped. But uh, ah, <laughs> you're good. You're good. All good. All good. Don't worry about it. Um, guys, again, we're gonna. Again, dive so much into well, one the topic right, breaking Web three into Web two, but also um, incorporating some, I guess, elements of Nifty Island because, in my opinion, in my perspective, Nifty Island is one of the leading gaming projects of the current ecosystem, and I think there's so much that we can learn on how exactly, on a social dynamic perspective, how gamers can interact with one another here in Web three, right? And it's beyond just sending an invite code, getting people onto your island, right? Um, there's ways for you to participate in the upcoming airdrop, right? But let's save that for later. Just want to say thank you to all these panelists for making time today. Um, so here's the thing, guys. Breaking Web3 into Web2, it's one of the, again, the thing with spaces that I see, especially Web3, is this is just one of those topics where at some point of a given space, and it doesn't even have to revolve around Web3 gaming, right? This is a topic that just gets brought up because this is, Probably one of the overall end goals that we're trying to see and reach here in the space is how can we exactly break Web3 into Web2, right? Or is it going to be backwards? Is is Web2 finally going to see some kind of potential in this space and then they break through into Web3? Um, so I feel like it can work both ways, but let's talk about th this one way, right? This one avenue so far, and that is Web3 into Web2. What do we want to see different? What do we want to see built? Um, and again, there's just been a plethora of gaming projects coming up left and right. Um, and even before gaming was currently the meta, we've also seen a lot of IP-based projects still popping out left and right, even even that's going on today. So saturation, uh, in my opinion, is starting to kind of be felt. But again, it, this is a growing ecosystem and we're just super, super early in all of this. Right now, it's just about positioning yourself to make sure that you're sustainable. How can you be a part of that long-term group of winners? Right. Um, the way I want to kick this off, though, uh, I actually want to hear from new voices that I haven't heard in a while, and that is I'm gonna pass it to RPH from Steady Stack. Um, RPH, in, in your perspective, and again, the way I want to kick this conversation off is, what are some key differences you notice between Web three and Web two brands? Right. And the reason why I want to start off here is because we have to identify how does our products, the teams that you see here, the brands that you see here, stand out from what you typically see on maybe a day-to-day -day basis, right? So RPH, in your perspective, what are those things or, you know, yeah, that, that list of differences that you see amongst Web3 brands and Web2 brands? Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. And, you know, I, I think Nifty Island, Steady Stack, a lot of the projects up on stage, KPR, I mean, we're all really good examples of this is, you know, there's there's a very unique dynamic between the community and the actual business that's building and shipping out all of these products, games, whatever, you know, the case may be. And to me, I think even beyond the blockchain, that's like the single biggest thing that I feel has like a tangible difference between Web 2 and Web 3 is, you know, in Web 2, maybe they have those focus groups, maybe they have beta testers, but you haven't seen that evolution of project spending, you know, time in the trenches with thousands of people who are diehard raving fans of their brands. 
And so I think that's the biggest thing that separates Web3 from the Web2 crowd. And I think, you know, Web3 does a really good job of, you know, being uh, almost like a precursor to the type of behavior that we're going to see in Web2. And this is one of the strongest, I'd say, moats or way of doing business that it's not easy to quote unquote do, right? I mean, if it was so easy, then all the Web2 brands would have already adopted this methodology. Uh, and so I think that's our strategic advantage in, in Web2. Uh, Web3 is the fact that the feedback loop between the product and the brand and the users is so tight. And, you know, if you're building any sort of product, you're building any sort of game, you know that that feedback loop is everything. Because the sooner you can get that feedback, the sooner you can implement it. And if you can build exactly what the market wants, uh, you're going to be heading in a very, very strong direction. That is a very, very valid take. And, and it is very true. Um, and we see it not even just for gaming projects, like you just said, right? You see it across all levels of what I feel um, that summarizes Web3, right? You have some people who are literally Solana maxis, people who are like ETH maxis, right? But I feel nowadays the narrative is starting to shift where people are starting to see cross-chain interoperability. And maybe we're starting to be more open-minded on how can we exactly um, bridge the gaps that are even... Uh, again, that are happening in Web3. Um, RPH, great, great take. And I, I want to build off of this by going to Charles real quick because Charles, um, this new paradigm shift that, that I feel is unraveling right in front of us, right? Especially with Nifty Island on the forefront of everything. How, how, do, you, how do you think it correlates between building that bridge? Or like, for example, gaming, right? I feel like gaming is just one of those things where you don't have to do much explaining to someone on why they should play a game. Like, just show them the gameplay, show them why it's fire, right? And then that's enough for them to be like, okay, you know what, I'll try it out. But again, the the idea of it, though, is we need to tuck the technology of Web3 behind the product so that we don't scare the Web2 audience. And maybe this is a, a point that I keep bringing up, but it's it's just what comes to mind when I think of onboarding, right? How can we not scare Web2 users through gaming? And I think... The sole core pillar of video games is just to make it a fun, entertaining game. Now, Charles, my question to you is, how do you plan to leverage Nifty Island to not even just satisfy the Web3 audience that you've built successfully, but now you're tackling this whole other broader, wider audience that is Web2, right? What are your strategies there? Yeah, so I think the way the way I view it really is that there's just there's, there's only one there's really only one path to building a great product is just iterating and t creating something that's so irresistibly good and irresistibly different that when users see it or come in contact with it, they're like, oh, this is the only place to get it. You know, whatever, whatever this brand of fun, this experience is, it's the only place I can get it. And uh, and if players and want to share it and people see it and are drawn to it, it's kind of, it's really it's really that that simple. And so for, for us, I think like... Uh, I think a lot of other technologies have had the same property that blockchain has had, where in their early days, they seem kind of unappealing. Uh, so I think even if you look at social media, which feels like, you know, it's just ubiquitous, it's just part of life now. In the early days of like being someone with like a MySpace account, uh, it seemed kind of lame. And uh, I think for a lot of it's like easy to forget, like how strange the behavior seemed at first. And it was kind of a, a niche of people using these things and uh and and for for many people they thought oh why would i ever use this this really just doesn't make sense uh, and now it's it would be strange to not use it right uh, i i think it's the same and i think uh it's it's just uh this stuff comes down to like a ton of small uh kind of small decisions that all have to be made correctly so that the experience is just perfect so i think for us we look at it and say like today, it's pretty fun to make an island. There are fun games to play on it. There are prizes that people are winning in game. Uh, there's cool UGC to collect and communities. But there's a million tiny details that need to be ironed out and made truly perfect so that people come to it and just kind of invariably say, oh, I not only want to play this, I want to tell my friends about it. Uh, and, and I think that just takes a little bit of time. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think uh, I honestly think that we should try to make things that are really weird and different because if we're not doing that there's plenty of other products and uh and so the, the goal should be to do something really exceptional and strange that stands out in the crowd and i think the best products tend to feel really alien at first um and so yeah uh that's uh 
that's kind of how I view it is, is really do something wildly different, but you have to be committed to ironing out all the details such that the experience is just perfect. Like it's even think about it like with Facebook, it's imagine Facebook before the news feed when you were just on people's walls, like it was decent, but it took, you know, a couple iterations to get it to where it needed to be to really, really crush. So I think the same will be true here. It's like do something weird and wonderful and then figure out those small tactical product choices that turn it into a real, you know, monster, basically something that really people can't resist. Charles, I want to pick your brain because you use the term alienated, right? And <laughs> that's how I feel sometimes with like these NFTs, um, especially when we're, we're showcasing it to a, a non web three audience. How can we shift that though? Like how can we change it from this alienated product, right? Something that people are so speculative on into something that's more tangible, maybe something that's more, I guess, easy to interact with. What, what are your thoughts there, Charles? Yeah. Um, yeah, let's see. I mean, so I, I think, I think some amount of friction is, is kind of okay. And, and I think like, I think I've heard Gabe Layden put it this way and I, I agree with him, which is that it's like, if, if crypto was like really seamless and use and we had this level of usage you'd be like oh shoot like this is this isn't great because if it were really streamlined and not many people wanted to use it that would be actually kind of a bad sign but the fact that things are a little like broken and challenging and there are issues and yet there's still a ton of enthusiasm and people are excited about it i, I see as kind of a good a good thing um so so yeah i think like and i think too people are willing to put up with friction for something that's truly great and different so like People use have used Binance in the early days or like, you know, we'll use Uniswap because it offers something they can't get anywhere else, even if the experience isn't always perfect. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's really like step one, create something that is just like radically new and interesting and then make it frictionless over time. But if you skip that step one and you have like a, you know, really user friendly nothing, you know, it's like, who cares? Right. It's It's got to I think it has to be weird and wonderful first then you streamline it. That's at least my view. That's a great point. It's a great point. And again, I don't know how everyone else in this space got into Web3, but I just feel like 90% of everyone just got into the financial reasons. Again, like maybe that's why a lot of us are still in this space because we know that there is money to be made. But beyond that, right? Like shifting the narrative from this speculative behavior all the time to actually being interested on gaming products or um, even, even like things that I'm seeing from, uh, Pudgy Penguins, right? Like they're these toys that they're coming out with. Um, again, so many examples that I can pull out of the bag, but Charles just, uh, appreciate that question or that question, that take, um, I want to pass this to Ash real quick. And I want to follow up with Sanjay because as gaming creators continue to evolve in this space, right? There seems to be this demand of what do gaming creators want more out of prod, uh, out of projects, Right. Um, but Ash, from your perspective and, and what you're seeing with Nifty Island, what what have you seen differently amongst like the e the entire ecosystem of Web3? Do you think that we're starting to be more of a gamified ecosystem more than it was before? Or do you think we're still kind of build that we're still in the middle of, of building that narrative per se? What are your thoughts there, Ash? Well, for Nifty Island specifically, I think that we're seeing it with like a lot of these maps and just the way that they're being shared that it feels a lot more like within this game, like a community opposed to like some of these shooters and stuff where it's like, Oh, you hop in, like you play like a five V five V five on like one or two maps. Cause realistically, like a lot of games don't have like a ton of maps. Whereas with this, it's like, there's obviously incentives to, to play the game and to like go out and try other people's maps and spend time in the game and such. And from what I've seen on Twitter, and I don't think I've seen this anywhere else, and I would like to hear your thoughts on this, but when you see a lot of people that are posting about Nifty Island, it's about like the time that they're spending like just in their own island or in different islands. And that's one of the things that I really like because to me, it feels a lot more like a community game where people are, are like actually spending time together opposed to like, oh, let's hop in this thing and play for whatever. And then it's just, there's just, you know what I mean? When I, when I say that, it's just, it's right. a lot more of like a inclusive game opposed to like, oh, let's just play like a, like a quick round of like 5v5 on like a map in a game. Right, right. I mean, Charles, I'll, I'll love for you to build up on this. Is that exactly the intent that you had with designing 
Nifty Island's yeah. gameplay to be like that. Yeah, yeah, this is a, it's a good, it's a good point. Um, the the one of the terms I I always use for Nifty is community driven. So like it's a community driven gaming platform. That's that's what we're going for. And and so I think a lot of it's it's funny because there's a like in some ways that's a it's, it's I think we're leveraging Web three. We're doing some things that are a little bit more future forward. But in other ways, it's sort of looking back where I look at early experiences in like Halo 2, say, you know, and they felt like more community driven. You know, people, their kind of personalities you're aware of, lobby based play has this sort of fun social nature where you kind of like get to know people. And uh, and, and, and so we, we kind of wanted to take it back to that uh, and use Web3 to kind of intensify what that experience was. So, yeah, we're very much. I very much see it as like it's a community driven platform. You want people to connect and hang out and really view it as a space they inhabit, not just like a, you know, hop in a like skill based matchmaking game, because there's so many of those. I think there's so many games where it's just about the, you know, the random queue. And it's not that that's bad. It has its function. Right. But League of Legends, Valorant, Fortnite, Call of Duty, like it's all it's all the same experience of like the queue. Like fundamentally, you hop in, you queue to get in a game. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, and and we may add certain things that make matchmaking a little more streamlined if people want that experience. But yeah, we're definitely going for like a kind of oh, you happen to bump into your friend from the Sappy Seals community on you know a board ape person's island, and you guys ended up battling, and you made some fun content out of it, and it was funny. You know that's that's what we're going for. Right. I, I want to pass this same question to Sanjay. And Sanjay, um, you as a Twitch streamer, right? You probably and just gamer in general. You probably played so many games in your in your lifetime, but how would you how would you rate like the gameplay and maybe when you show this to people who aren't in the space per se of, of Web three, when you were to show Nifty Island gameplay, how do you think the res- like if you have right what what are, what kind of responses do you get or perhaps from chat right <laughs> when you're streaming what kind of what kind of responses do you get from chat? We'd love for you to, to dive in, Sanjay. Go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, one thing, uh, I did stream the game for a little bit, and uh, the the one thing, the first time I was playing the game, the first time when I played Nifty Island, obviously I met, went around in the in the map, and I'm going to be honest, I'm not big of a map builder, but I know I know the, UG, the next step for gaming is UGC. Like, if you go to Fortnite uh, creative section right now, you see so many UGC maps, and most of my friends are always in one or another UGC map rather than the official map, uh, of official Fortnite uh, game mode. So they're always in some maps. You know, Mr. Beast video comes out, and there is an official map around it within 15 minutes of the video. So, like, UGC is definitely going there where where it's going right now and it's going to be huge that way and when when and that's the same thing with nifty so as soon as i was trying to play nifty i pressed the m button to see the map around and the location or the first thing i see is tilted zone wars nuke town stuff like that right and the people in the chat they were like wait what the hell like they were like wait i want to play i want to play nuke town like what type of, what is the difference right like i want to see how this is different than the original one or how this is different than one on fortnite you know like people love that uh that uh uh, cu- that it's like it's like custom maps but at the same time is something they're already uh familiar with and it's something they're used to so it feels like home already right and this is something which nifty island and people building maps on nifty island has kind of like taken advantage of right away and and that's why it's doing so well is because you have all these only up maps you have this like you know um uh tilted zone wars and like nuketown and i'm sure there's more which i haven't even looked at yet and uh, people are like, feeling connected directly and it's also a very easy sell to new viewers slash gamers right so if i go to uh, make a video about it if i stream about it it's an easy sell to these guys uh, to people because like, look I, I made a map on this map and it's like just nuketown is shipment let's play it you know let's do it and oh yeah i play shipment in there as well so it's like i think it's a, i think it's cool and reactions are amazing we just need more people to stream it more people to uh, go on the platforms where uh, where normies are right so youtube videos uh, youtube live streams twitch uh, twitch live streams i think uh, i think we need to double down on that like i love making content on twitter I made um, a few videos about Nifty, uh, you know, great reactions, great engagement. But I think if we want to break out, we need to get on board with some streamers and, you know, uh, and start cooking with them. And uh, probably talk to Charles about this. Let's cook. Let's cook about that, too. 
Let's hey, and you say that you say that we need more streamers. Um, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I don't know if you have like a maybe like a helpful tip video on how to get streaming on Twitch. Um, I'll tell you right now. Last night I was over here trying to get my Twitch to work, and I could not figure out how to stream. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm not like <laughs> not tech tech savvy. Like I I figured out how to hook up all of my freaking new computer stuff in in the desktop. So like I want to just say that if you could help me get my Twitch running up, I've already got my account going and stuff. So this is DJ Jagman. If you want to DM me, uh, I'm trying to become a streamer. What's up? Jagman, Jagman sound like a straight boomer not understanding how to set up a stream. <laughs> no, 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 dude. I'm just kidding. I'm, just I'm kidding. over here in the streaming <laughs> section, and there's no way to start stream. I don't have a start stream <laughs> button. So, Sajay, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, you know, first of all, I just followed you back. Let me DM you a quick, like, five minute video, and you know, it'll be like. It'll teach you something, then you'll never forget. You'll be able to stream on any platform, anytime. You'll just know exactly what to do. And I'm a little bit surprised as well that you are shocked, I guess, because it is very simple. It is very simple. You just really have to <laughs> click start streaming. But yeah, I, I know like connecting your account and, you know, setting the bit rate and, uh, you know, choosing the right vi uh, video uh, resolution can be can be uh, problematic and confusing. But uh, but yeah, I'm going to DM you a video. Let's get more streams. Uh, um, just kind of like a random thought, I guess. I'll just throw it out there why I'm I'm talking about streaming and why I'm saying that Nifty Island should double down on it. Um, I did uh, I, I do streams with uh, Big Time. I did one with Big Time uh, the other day, and uh, you know Big Time shouted it out in their Discord, and that stream got so many viewers. And then there were so many normal people coming in the stream because the stream was popping on, uh, you know, the the recommended channels and stuff. So I think Nifty community is huge as well, and you know we can have some slots for streamers, and we can shout them out, and then they then they will go on recommended channels, bringing Nifty more views. So yeah, this is the whole thing. But uh, I'll definitely DM you back. Huge, huge. Again, we need more streamers. As we'll say, we need more streamers, and we need more DJs on the islands. Um, I will say that. Um, guys, I want to say we just passed seven minutes above the 30 minute mark in today's space. If you've been enjoying it like myself, again, a repost, liking, commenting, bookmark, that all goes a very long way. Um, I want to pass this real quick to Future Sight from KPR. Um, again, Future Sight, congrats on the launch of Ramen Wars. And I actually want to leverage that as a question go, uh, going to the next one, right? Again, Ramen Wars. I feel like it was just one of the easiest IPs to just build off of. And again, leverage that IP to get more users, uh, not even just into KPR, but playing the game itself, right? Um, similar to what we're kind of seeing with Nifty Island, where the, the gameplay is just focused on entertainment, right? Um, what, are your, what are your, I guess, ways and how are you planning to add into this bridge or breaking Web 3 into Web 2 with Ramen Wars, right? Future site, please go ahead. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I would say I think we've done our job right if it looks easy, because let me tell you what, it was anything but. but uh, so, you know, good IP and seamless uh, web browser based gaming, gamified experiences. Um, and particularly those that kind of connect into Web3, there's a lot of kind of customization that needs to go on. And, and there's a lot of uh, stuff on the back end that you need to, to figure out. And so working with very talented devs and other things is, is a big part of that challenge. And it's, it's just great seeing so much of that kind of um, professionalism and expertise start to really get developed in the space. And, and uh, so I think we've got a lot of really cool stuff um, for the space to look forward to in future as more and more of these, these uh, very high, high quality teams are coming in. Um, so for, look, for us, this is really a proof of concept. So what we wanted to show was that we could take a very public figure, Esther Choi has, you know, big following, growing following, has TV shows, has, um, you know, high YouTube uh, shows on and all of that kind of stuff. She's, she's got a big presence and bring her into Web3. And I think we've, we've shown that we can do that. We can introduce her to Web3 and everyone loves her and her charisma and her edge and that they get it. And so they've become her fans through this process. Um, and then with Ramen Wars, we also wanted to create this kind of seamless web 
browser-based experience for her fans to be able to experience this world. So they log in via an email or even a guest account, right? They can try the first chapter without even an email. Just put on your, your browser, boonramen.com, on a phone, an iPad, a desktop, a Mac, anything. You know, I want a, a challenge to anyone who plays it on a Tesla or something like that. I'd love to see the most unique kind of place you could play this. Um, so send, send, send me a... Uh, <laughs> Send me a, a screenshot, but um, we just wanted to make that really easy. Um, as people have been saying, it's like, you know, right. obfuscate a lot of the tech layer and just make it very seamless and, and also, you know, protect new users from some of the pitfalls that the space still has when you're dealing with wallets and signings and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so that was a very, very big part for us. And having now kind of developed that, we can then do that with future activations and events as right. well. Um, and so, but then the other aspect of this is how do we bring out of the digital realm um, our brands and sub-brands with Boone into the physical spaces that people are coming into contact with them. Um, and so, you know, off the back of Ramen Wars, the, the winning ramen dish will, will be a Boone ramen dish on the menus in Esther's restaurants and stuff like that, which we think is pretty cool, to be honest. But equally, we're rolling out some products and there's, there's teasers of those in the prize pools that will hit retail shelves and we'll, we'll just have a bit more um, mainstream touch points uh, like we've started to see in the last year where right. people can come across these brands and these Web3 sub-brands and other things, products, rollouts, and they, they're enjoying a product. They don't have to see it as linked to an NFT or crypto or whatever, whatever it is. We've got so many talented artists and brand designers and product managers and stuff now in this space that I think we're not just on the cutting edge of technology, but we're starting to be on the cutting edge of design, of branding, and how we can create emotional connections to brands that go beyond just being a consumer. And so I think um, what, what others were saying earlier was really, really important. You know, we throw around the word community a lot, but really what we're talking about there is that we're bringing people into these spaces as, as a fully fledged identity. Web2 brands have a real problem with just seeing people as faceless credit cards, right? And so their, their whole user acquisition is based on how do I get them to spend money with their credit card in my user system and how do we keep them within our system doing that? Web3 obviously has a commercial and financial incentive at it, but it goes a lot deeper than that. We're, we're here to build emotional connections. We're here to build creative connections like we're seeing with people building things in Nifty Island. Mm -hmm. um, and we're here to build persistent connections that uh, are not just have a memory of your place within within these worlds you know the blockchain is very good for being a digital memory and i think that's going to become increasingly important as we become more and more digital but but that interoperability so you know we're not scared of partnerships in this space we don't see it as cannibalizing our audience or our market share right we see it as um as a, a net positive when we can be interoperable, when we can flow between different worlds and when we can have um, different connections and various things like that. So I think all of those things just people are going to start to see that Web3 isn't just about throwing money at an NFT or, or a meme coin and numbers go up. Or in, in the case of most normies in mainstream, numbers crash very, very quickly after they hear about it, right? So, um, <laughs> so you know, we've got, to get, we've got to get over some of that stigma. And we do that by moving away from the financialization and by moving away from the speculative elements. And we go into the the fun and engaging and cultural and creative side of it. And I think Web3 does that better than pretty much anywhere out there in Web2, other than some of the gaming stuff, which is why it's also really cool to see that that the gaming um, production companies and studios and maybe not the users yet <laughs> so much, right. but a lot of the professionals are embracing Web3 because they get it and they get how this kind of um, space can really enhance a lot of the emotional connectivity and, and personal identity elements of, of being involved in, in these digital spaces. Great take. Great. It, it reminds me of literally what RPH said at the very beginning of the space is like, there's that feedback loop that you can't build every, anywhere else, right? And I think that's what's most effective about Web3 as a community is, again, that social interaction, that difference in how we, how you're able to just get in direct contact with Charles, right? Um, or any founder, 
right? And, and that's what I love about this space. And again, you touched up on that really well. Um, really quick, I want to pass this back to RPH from Steady Sacks. Um, RPH, w- one of the things that Future Sight has said was that one of the hardest things we're, we're trying to escape from is this digital realm to then on a, on a physical plate, right? Um, and, and again, maybe this just makes the most sense because in the Web2 perspective of things, maybe some people aren't on X spaces like how we are almost every single day, right? Or maybe they don't have enough time to want to spend, you know, hours and hours on just Discord and getting to know a project, whatever that is. Um, how can we sh- how can we make that more seamless, right? What, what is a process that hasn't been explored or, or something that you're looking into that can create that bridge? And again, the, the title of the space, Breaking Web 3 to Web 2, how can we create a shorter yet more efficient bridge so that we can reach a, a broader audience into Web2. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that, RPH? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point and a, and a really interesting question as well. And I mean, I guess this is the beauty of being so early, right? Like we get to design and come up with the creative solutions to be able to make, you know, everything that we're talking about into a reality. I think, you know, part of being so early is we have to just continue to keep our heads down and building where we think the future and where people are going to move anyway. Like people are going to come to Web3. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And so we have to keep on doing, you know, what, what we feel, is, you know, the future is going to look like because these people, no matter what, they're going to gravitate towards our industry. And, you know, a perfect example of this is I have never seen the level, I mean, of of course, besides peak bull market, right? I've never seen more people bullish on AR, VR, and the metaverse than when Apple Vision Pro just came out. And now people are like, oh shit, like I can actually see myself putting this on and replacing my TV or operating in some type of a, a, a virtual world, right? And so these are the types of directions that, you know, if you're building in Web3, you know that these things are going to happen. And, you know, that's the blessing of being early. You even said something that was really interesting, Balsa, earlier about how, uh, you know, basically we, we've come here for a lot of the financial gains at the beginning. And I can relate to that because I bought my first Doge Pound. That was my first NFT at like 0.1, 0.2 ETH. And then I sold it for two ETH in the summer, like three, six months after. And then, you know, you kind of get that NFT pill and everything kind of just uh snowballs from there but what's the reason we stay you know if you if you stayed around in the bear market which is very clear that nifty island did which is very clear that ash robin did leon you future dj steady stack sanjay everybody i mean there's a reason why we stuck around when there was no money to be made and the reason why is because we know that technology is going to push in a certain direction so I think we need to keep on doing what we're doing. And then at a very high level, right? Like, you know, I would love to say that I can go build an Apple Vision Pro, but you know, they're the ones with the infinite funding that they can go, you know, pour into this and then they build that infrastructure. But then we have to be the ones who are thinking, okay, hey, how can I create steady stack applications inside of the Apple Vision Pro that motivate people or same thing with Nifty Island, right? Like, you know, just being ready. And I think that's what we're all doing. Absolutely. <laughs> you mentioned the Apple Vision Pros. I'll, I'll just never forget the amount of like videos I see people in public and just like it looks ridiculous. But I guarantee you guys within probably the next two or three, five years, that shit is going to be a norm, dude. Um, RPH, you brought up really great points. I want to give a shout out to you and the Steady Sack team because you guys are literally cooking W's as far as like trading and you guys are bringing in a lot of money for your holders. And I think Again, that is a utility, kind of like we were just talking about, right? Like that financial incentive that will never go away. But the fact that you guys turned it into a service, into a product by being a part of that steady stack community, I think that's one of the biggest benefits that, again, being a part of the the SS uh, community carries, right? So shout out to you, RPH. And again, amazing, great take. Um, Guys, we're approaching the last 10 minutes of this space. Um, So many different angles, so many different topics we covered. Um, I do just really real, real quick want to get a different voice. I brought up little auntie onto this space. Shout out to little auntie, but she DM'd me on the side earlier today of today's space, and she actually had a question for you, Charles. And in, in regards to again the marketing of Web three into Web two, but I don't want to ask her question on her behalf. Little auntie, we got you up on the panel. I would love for you to ask a question to Charles. Go ahead. Yo yo yo, GM GM. Oh my God, first of all, 
Thank you so much, Balsa. Thank you, Nifty, for um, bringing, bringing me up to the stage. You know, um, as a sappy seal, I got to come up in here to off out to you guys. I love, love, love Nifty so much. <laughs> and I love, I had so much fun hanging out with my Web3 friends on Nifty. So, you know, the interesting thing is that I'm not a gamer. And that's also the brilliant part about Nifty, because even for me, a non-gamer, I can still have so much fun in game. And then, you know, as time passing by, as I play more and more, it actually started to turn me into a gamer. So, so, so look like how, how, how brilliant it is. So like overall, I'm a big fan. And but here, yeah, I do have a question that I wish to ask the TM. I wish to ask Charles in Nifty Island. You know, um, I might have limited understanding about the game, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but to me, I see Nifty is mainly marketing from Web three to Web two. You know, AKA uh, as you know, collaborating with NFT projects and started as a game fight thing, community based, being mostly Web three community integrated. Um, but you know, based on the brilliant game quality and the interface, the concept and everything about the game itself i think it's such a great game overall and i i feel like nifty maybe nifty the the team have you ever considered you know like how to onboard more players from web 2 to web 3 like oriented no not oriented you know like we've been oriented from web 3 and then try to bridge it to web 2 have we ever considered you know um getting from web 2 to web 3 like um it's like like not the reverse way, but both direction. So uh, I I know that uh, uh, Balsa has touched on it a little bit with uh, RPH, uh, and as RPH was sharing, you know, it's not a question of if; it's a question about when will Web two people get on board to Web three. Uh, but I do would like to extend the question a little bit. You know, like so instead of being ready, is there anything that um, Nifty is planning? to do marketing in Web 2 and to bring more Web 2 players to Web 3 ecosystem, because we all know that's going to be huge. That's going to be a huge thing for the space as, you know, people in Web 2 will get to know more and learn more about Web 3 projects and communities. And that, that's just going to be a huge win for the space. So, yeah, that's, that's my question for Nifty, please. Yeah, yeah, great question. I'm really glad you're enjoying the game, too. And it's nice to hear that uh, you're saying you haven't been much of a gamer, but this is nifty's turning you into a gamer that's awesome uh, i've been seeing some other examples of that and it's super cool to see there's a lot of different ways you can play it so that's part of the fun it gets all kinds of different people in so glad you're enjoying it uh and thanks for the question uh yeah so we we definitely are thinking about this uh the thing that i say over and over again with is just the critical piece is it's about sequencing. It's not that, you know, we don't want to get Web2 players in and we don't want it to be a huge game world. That's totally the ambition. Like the goal is to make something that's like, you know, and I say this not like saying it's easy or like we have it figured out or or anything like that. Just I say the goal is to make something like a Roblox or a Fortnite or a Minecraft. That's what we're trying to do uh, over time. And to get there, you know, you look at like Roblox, I, there's something I'll tweet it sometimes, but it's like, you know, their 2005 homepage it looks horrible. Uh, there's very few players. Um, they were like a tiny company and they just didn't give up. They just kept pushing and they started with a small enthusiast crowd and they grew it out from there. And I think often in Web3 especially, there can be something where people want, uh, you know, mainstream success overnight. And and I get that. Uh, or, or maybe want p projects to be more aggressive in pursuing that. We We will be very aggressive in pursuing it. But our goal first is really make something that people absolutely love, like an enthusiast group absolutely loves. And we have a, we have a little more work to do there, I think. Like we, you know, there's a lot of Web3 people who haven't started playing Nifty yet. We're going we're gonna to be onboarding them. You're going to see us move very aggressively to get more Web3 communities actively playing in large numbers. So we're pushing on that. We're going to make the experience way better. If you think it's fun right now, it's going to be a hell of a lot more fun. You know, give us two months, give us three months, six months. The game's going to be way better, way more to do, way more stable, way more performant, way more viral. And uh, and, and so we'll get there. And then as soon, when, when I feel like basically we have something where if I get someone to stream it on Twitch, like a giant Twitch streamer, and players tend to come in, they tend to be retained, and then they tend to share 
if as soon as we hit that point where i feel like a normal user who's not the super enterprising web3 user will will do that uh then yeah absolutely we're going to be pushing hard and it will be very much a creator led strategy we think that every twitch streamer should have an island every youtuber should have an island every creator influencer community in the broader internet should have islands so yeah we'll we'll get there i just think uh you know the goal first is make something people really really love uh and i think we have that for some people already but we have more work to do to make it really deeply sticky lo well, ati is there anything you want to say oh. go ahead thank you so much thank you so much i i think i i got goosebumps i mean i'm super excited too I I can't wait until you know like I see on Instagram I see on social media about people streaming NFT it's going to be so fun and What happened? Who hit it? Charles it's uh, either you or me. Good? <laughs> oh, I mean, I guess I'll take the blame. I'll take the blame. No, it's I don't okay. know. But I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to. Um, let me hit the, <laughs> the unmute button. Yeah. But auntie, I'm so it's sorry for that. I, Please it's continue. When I started to, sorry, it's when I started to say, you know, I, I, I'm I'm so excited to see all the seals, and then <laughs> I got <laughs> muted. Okay, I shouldn't be shielding seals. <laughs> the seals are too powerful. They're too powerful already. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. We 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 like the seals. Yeah, That's but thank huge. you, thank you so much. Um, I I'm definitely stoked. I'm definitely excited about what's gonna come in the future. Amazing, Absolutely. amazing. Thanks for being with us. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and glad to glad to have you with us for the ride. It's gonna be great. Thank you. Thank you, little auntie, for coming up on stage and asking amazing, amazing questions. Guys, we are approaching the very top of the hour very soon. So you know what that means. We're gonna be wrapping up. Uh, in just a few minutes, but I just want to give a huge amount of expression of gratitude to all my panelists today: RPH, Ash, Sanjay, Lil Unty, Future Sight, Jagman. Um, thank you guys for making again today's space super, super memorable. Um, again, Charles, one of my favorite things I always like to do, and and I'm pretty sure you're used to this now, is any announcements as far as the upcoming airdrop. What can we be looking forward to um, in the coming weeks? I know February is essentially in its first week, but Anything as far as the end of February that your holders community can look forward to? Go ahead, Charles. Oh yeah, and I'll say with us, like, you know, I keep it pretty immediate. So like, you're gonna see stuff from us this week uh, that'll be cool. So, a couple couple bits of alpha for people listening in on the space. Uh, we, you'll see quests again, uh, but basically with more consequential rewards, not just blooms, but NFTs. So you're gonna see bigger, more consequential quests. So you'll see that ramp up a little, and really, I can't ex- emphasize enough: the quest system is so important, and uh, I think is going to be one of the killer features of the game. Uh, and and so we're going to be ramping that up some. And then another thing I'll I'll, ha- I'll give you a little hint at is we see the most important thing is that Nifty Island feels like a part of the Web three experience, both on Twitter, where I think it's very active, but Discord is a really important vector of the experience too. And right now, I think we can, we're going to roll something out. Uh, it could be today or tomorrow uh, that brings Nifty Island closer to the best Discord servers in uh, in the community. So you're going to see that roll out. Um, and then, yeah, you're going to see us gear up for more leaderboard competitions. Um, and there's a bunch more in the works. So I could I could talk about but And then I guess that's the stuff that's like this week. There's a lot more that comes beyond that. Um, and then I, and I think the thing just I always try to emphasize is if you're playing right now, you know, the goal is if we can rally together and really push to try to create a new type of game world as a team, that's how we're going to win. So I'll say that we're delivering some more features this week. Um, they're going to be great. There's still a long way to go. But if you're excited about a community driven gaming future that really puts Web3 on the map and you want to join us, get involved, hop in the Discord. If you're a builder, DM me. Let's connect. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're just uh, excited. It's going to be a fun time. Thanks for being with us. Get involved, guys. Again, to all my aspiring creators out there, guys, now is the time to literally just create content out of gaming. You know, it doesn't even have to be Nifty Island. You have Ramen Wars. You have all these different kinds of games that are coming out. Now is the opportunity, right? And I hope everyone that's been paying attention to today's space, please do not fade Web3 Gaming. Guys, I'm going to play this. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who's made it to the very top of the hour for making this space extremely memorable. Again, we host weekly Nifty Island Spaces. Um, set those set those reminders and please shoot a follow to all my panelists today. It's been an amazing, amazing discussion. Guys, again, this will be the official wrap up. Thank you to everyone and we will see you 
next week.